Welcome Transformer fans, my name is Composite Energy and today's review will be on the Transformers Dark of the Moon Voyager class Shockwave and here he is in his alt mode which is a Cybertronian tank and here we can see lots of bits of detail nice detailing there you go uh, he has four wheels, two large ones on the front and two smaller ones on the back under his uh, rear treads which allow him to roll fairly well a bit noisily but he does roll quite well and that is it for his um, alt mode he doesn't really do anything else in this tank mode the turret doesn't move this can move but there's nothing else you can really do in this mode still it looks pretty nice so on to his uh, transformation uh, to make it easier, you first take off this uh, bladed accessory, which you put off to the side. You come over here and remove his uh, his hose. There we go. And something I want to point out is that the hoses are different shapes on each end, which indicates like where you should put it. The smaller the smaller one should go into this one, uh, would plug into this one securely, and this one you can plug on the other ends. Uh, I found that out since uh, if you do it the other way around, the fit is the connection is kind of loose. So that's sort of the uh, proper way to do it, as I found it. So put that off to the side, and then for here we start transforming. First thing, you have to close this up. By doing that, you push this down, lift that up, and then when you let go, it turns back. As you can tell, because it, since this is a dark of the moon figure, he's supposed to have a mech tech weapon, which is what this is which is that. When you push it down, it just reveals two other barrels next to his, uh, two other cannons next to his main cannon. And that's pretty much it. And to lock it, you just push it all the way in and push down. Since he's a Voyager, you can lock the, um, the uh, mech tech into its uh, alternate fire. So, hold on. there we go. Let go of that. So now on to transformation. First, lift this up. You come over here and lift this up. These are these would be his arms. So lift this up and lift them all the way for uh, clearance purposes. Then you come over here. You have to separate this. There we go. Oh no! First you lift this up. My apology. First you lift this up to disc to unpeg it, and then start separating. There we go to lift up. And then for this part, you rotate this in, like so. Rotate this in, and then you peg these back down. You peg his chest back into these ports. Well, oh, not yet. You then have to come over here. Maybe skipping some steps here. And you have to separate this. Here we go. You carefully unpeg this from here. Because these are pegged into here, so you unpeg these, and then you separate these out. These will eventually be his legs. And to finish off this bit, you bring it down until these connect. And there you go. So now that's connected. So then you just bring down the arms, bring down the arms. So the arms are more or less done. Now for this part, you come back here, bring this around. And let me straighten out the legs first. Straighten out the legs. Straighten out legs. And to bring out the feet, you first, you then have to pull this down. I mean, before that, come down here, bring out the heels. Then you come in here, bring this entire assembly down, and it'll peg into place and also reveal some extra spikes. Bring up the uh, knee shield with the knee armor, so there you go, and we almost have him. Next we go up to the head, which is a little bit finagly in my opinion, so you come in here, and then you, how was this, you rotate this out, and then you have to separate this, so to make it easy, you rotate, how was this, You know you're supposed to rotate so rotate this around. 
Oh, and then it folds down. Okay, now I see it. Then you fold this down and rotate to reveal his uh, shock wavy head. And then for this part, you bring this little piece angled down. Explain why later. And then for this part, you have to bring it here. Then when you're rotating this in, you need to peg these into these little ports on the wheel right there. So peg it in. And then at the same time, this all these pieces line up. There you go. And do it properly, it'll be in this configuration, with this piece being over here. Uh, I remember I did this the first time and I didn't do it right because I didn't know you're supposed to peg it in. But by doing this, it keeps all of this into place. And it's a pretty neat little triangle design. Then you bring this up into here, and then peg that into there, like so. And flip out the one hand and if you want to you flip out the other hand and I'll get into details about that later but yeah this shockwave actually has two hands and there we have him in his robot mode oh wait well one more thing to add and I'll add that later so here he is in his uh, robot mode nice bits of details overall very nice design very nice silhouette in my opinion anyways so that's down. So now let's get on with the uh, articulation. Head is on a swivel, not a ball joint, just on a swivel. Arms can rotate 360, in out, swivel there, bend at the elbow, and a bend at the wrist. Other arm is the same. Legs can go out that far, back that far, forward, bend at the knee, very nice bend at the knee swivel at the upper thigh and that's it and no waste just wanted to make sure so that's it for his articulation his articulation is fairly decent for his uh, class size very very nice silhouette so now get on to his um accessories first is the arm blade which you can pretty much hold it in his hand or you can plug it in any one of these ports including Including this one, if you wanted to make a more menacing arm cannon. However, I prefer to have him at his uh, other arm, like so. So now he has an arm blade, and for the cannon, we come into his uh, tube. And like I said earlier, you just plug this one into here, and then for this one, you can plug it in also in any port. But ideally, you're supposed to plug it into this one that I said earlier you had to move out of the way. So just plug it in there. If it lets me... Come on. Come on, this worked earlier. And there we go. It's not as secure as I'd like it to be. That. There we go. That says if it's too problematic, you just plug it into his shoulder. There we go. It's not supposed to be there, but for some reason, it's not letting me plug it into here. Let me try one more time. Get it right, and then I'll adjust it. Sorry for the awkward position, shockwave. And there. I'll probably switch it out later, but yeah. So, there it is, and there's his uh, tube going into his arm, into his uh, cannon. And if you wanted to, since if you're familiar with Shockwave, he's supposed to have one hand, you can fold this up to um, give him the one-handed look. However, I think I like having the, the hand out. No, no, you don't, hand up. Again, no, because you can tell that's a hand. Yeah, hand up, hand up. Hand down. So, yeah. So, there's Shockwave. And another thing to point out is that he has light piping in his uh, menacing eye, which I didn't point out earlier, is a very, very nice sculpt. It's a very nice looking head. So, yeah. So, now that's it for his uh, articulation. On to his. Oh, and also his uh, features, which was the uh, Mech Tech weapon, which unfortunately with the hose, you can't really do it properly. You have the hose and you have his blade, and those are his, his features and his accessories. 
So now onto the size comparisons. Here comes Cliff Jumper and Ratchet. And as a bonus size comparison, we have his a uh, sort of wave mate or toy line mate, I guess. Whatever. Here we have a uh, Dark in the Moon Voyager Megatron, and they look really good together. So I'll uh, put them off to the side. So yeah, overall, this is a very nice and solid figure. Nice shape, nice sculpt, uh, very e very simple transformation, pretty straightforward. And just overall, it's a very nice design. Uh, in my opinion, it's one of the uh, better designs from the Dark of the Moon series. Um, I've mentioned earlier that I'm not a huge fan of that movie. And I'm also not a huge fan of the figures in this line. Shockwave, however, is one of those exceptions. And so, final thought is that this is a very solid figure and I highly recommend it. Yeah. And uh, one more thing to mention, which is a very interesting, and I'm going to bring back uh, Megatron. And here's the weird thing. Uh, well, his, his cannon, his arm cannon, the um, Astro Mag Cannon or Particle Wave Cannon, uh, when I looked them up, it had both names. You can actually remove it. Yeah, This can be removed, which explains why he has two hands, which is a nice little detail. So let me unpeg this. There we go. And you can plug this into his other hand. However, it doesn't fit that well. It's like the shape is a bit off, so it doesn't fit entirely well onto this arm. However, it does fit here, because it's meant for his uh, right arm. However, for some reason, and I didn't know this was, a, this was a thing until I did a little bit of research, apparently, and because of the way that this few, this uh, his weapon is designed, you can't really use this for other figures, except for this Megatron. For some reason, this figure, this accessory, works very well, and I mean scary well, on this figure. Let me show you. Just plug it into his arm. Train out the arm a bit. It fits, like, just right. And you just plug this into his tank. And there you have Megatron with a proper fusion cannon. And I am just blown away by how well this, this works. It's like, it's scary how well this works on this Megatron. Which makes it the second, the second accessory I've seen from another figure that works not only well with this figure, but it's almost as if it was designed for this figure. It is just, it's, it's, it scares me. With the first one being this, this gun, this uh, gun was with the, uh, age, if I remember correctly, the Age of Extinction Voyager Evasion Mode Optimus. Uh -huh. He came with this weapon that had little pegs in it that fit this figure's hand. And the overall design matched the shotgun that he used in Dark of the Moon. And not the um, and not Optimus's weapon. So yeah, so these are two accessories from two separate figures that work with this figure, and in some ways it works as if it was designed for this figure. It is just mind-boggling how how that how well that works. Like I don't know. Hold on, you get unpegged. Wait a minute. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Fixed it. So yeah, just saying that it works very well with him. Let's uh, give. Uh, whoops. Let's give Shockwave back his uh, his cannon. Put that off to the side, and I'll give it back to him. And for the sake of ease, I'm just gonna plug it back into his arm. So yeah. Solid figure, and that was a nice little factoid about that accessory. So, now on to the mini history section of the figure. Now, Shockwave, as I'm guessing most of my viewers know, I guess for the fans out there that know, is a G1 character that in most versions 
was the highest ranking Decepticon that was left behind on Cybertron to manage the affairs of the Decepticons. Essentially, uh, Megatron left him back to take charge to basically make sure that Decepticons kept ruling Cybertron. So he was sort of the, um, what do you say, king? No, not king. He was basically the guy, the, yeah, he, he was left behind by Megatron on Cybertron to manage his the affairs of Cybertron to make sure that Decepticons were still ruling. Pretty much. Wow. A lot longer than I wanted to be. So, this being the um, first film version of the character, he kind of... They didn't really, like, bring most of the... Uh, how do I put this? The film version, the Dark of the Moon version of this character was portrayed as a big bruiser type of character. While the original... While, other ver while the traditional version of Shockwave is that of a, um, you know, cold, calculating intellectual who has, um, whose physical features that are iconic to him is having one arm de dedicated as a weapon. I think having one arm being a laser with a tube connected to his back and a uh, cycloptic and basically having one eye, which funny enough, and being purple, which this figure, more so than the movie, this figure kept those three physical features where he's purple, one eye, and has a, hold on, has one arm that is essentially a gun. Although I, I still do like the option that he can fold it out. But yeah, that you have that option, you know, for swapping and stuff. But yes. So the film version, personality-wise, he didn't do much. I will say that I was a bit disappointed that they didn't make him as, you know, the cold calculating scientist, mad scientist that he's usually portrayed as. Um, however, they did give him a... A sort of, um, not quirk, but a sort of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Feature. Feature? No. They basically gave him an extra sort of thing that previous Shockwaves didn't have, but future Shockwaves sort of adopted, which was they gave him a pet in the film. In Dark of the Moon, Shockwave was sort of the owner or master of the driller bot, which was that big, um, uh, that big worm, that big Cybertronian worm that was, you know, drilling through buildings. So he was that thing's master. And after that movie, I started to see, I remember seeing that, um, Shockwave, like later versions of Shockwave would have, would have him be involved in like with pets. Like, um, some examples would be in the, um, Fall of Cybertron video game. He was directly responsible for the creation of the Dinobots in the Transformers Prime show, which is my personal favorite version of Shockwave. He was responsible for creating the Predacons, for bringing them back. I think in the Rise of the Dark Spark video game, he was also responsible for sort of recruiting and manipulating the Insecticons. And I think it was like another version that was responsible for some the creation of something called weaponizers, but or it was something else. But yeah, after after this version of Shockwave, they sort of gave him the uh, gave him pets after this. Well, pets in sort of a weird. I don't know, maybe a weird not to Soundwave. On Soundwave, also had minions like the, his Cassetticons and stuff. But yeah, the film version of Shockwave, this version was a really cool design, but not that great in the personality. I felt he was wasted and he didn't have anything else. Outside of his appearance, had nothing else that was really shockwave about him. Although they did give him the pet thing, which was adopted in later in uh, future versions. You know, in a weird way. But yeah, but all that aside, overall, shockwave is a, this shockwave figure is a very solid figure. I considered one of the best figures in the Dark of the Moon line and worth yeah, hunting down. So yeah. So this is gonna, this has been my review of the Transformers Dark of the Moon Voyager class Shockwave. This is Composite Energy signing off. Peace out.